The aim of the fifth phase government under His Excellency President Dr. John Pombe Magufuli is to build an industrialized and middle economy country. While addressing the Sokoina University of Agriculture, Sua community, His Excellency President Dr. John Pombe Magufuli insisted on the importance of doing research, mainly on cotton plants, so as to solve the myth of wearing second-hand clothes. This university can be a source of change to the lives of many Tanzanians. Talking of cotton, we grow cotton and send them as raw materials to Europe. European produce clothes, we wear them and bring us the used ones. We grow cotton, why can't we produce and wear our own clothes, then export the used ones to Europe? What is your problem? Why Tanzania? We must ask ourselves, where did we go wrong? What weaknesses do we have? What diseases do we have? The fifth government's strategy of building industries aims at providing reliable market for farmers and creating employment in the country. The Minister for Industry, Trade and Investment Honorable Charles John Mujage, MP, explains. Talking of cotton industry, everyone knows the cotton sector and it is an important sector. Cotton is a crop that enables the production of clothes. If you read publications on the building of industrial economies, cotton is a sector that is explained to be significant and that, if it is given an attention, it will easily achieve the purpose of industrial economy. I want to tell you, there are some people who would not understand why we are building industries. 75% of the reasons of building industries are creating employment. Any government that ignores job creation, its days are numbered. <laughs> Thinking of the question by President Dr. Magufuli on where we have gone wrong, Joseph Mageta, cotton farmer in the Shinyanga region, says, I was a cotton farmer for many years, since 1990s. I continued with crop until when the challenges persisted. That is, the government paid less attention on this crop, mainly on the input. You find a farmer unable to manage their farm, and when it is time to plant, the farmer does not have money, and it is because of politicians. This crop has been influenced by politics. You find someone talking about politics, especially members of parliament and councillors. They are bragging about crops that do not require politics. Mr. Mageta presents an image of many farmers who have left cotton cultivation. The Cotton Board is a statutory organization entrusted with the function of overseeing the growth and sustainability of the cotton subsector in the country. Malcolm Tunga, the Director General of the Tanzania Cotton Board, TCB, says that efforts are now being made by the fifth government to ensure the availability of better seeds that will assist farmers to increase productivity. The government has made great efforts to revive cotton crop and this year we expect more than last year's production. We produced a total of 133,000 tons of cotton seeds last season. But we expect if everything will go as planned to produce over 600 million kilograms. This shows that the government intentions to revive or sustain five strategic crops including cotton, coffee, tea, sugar, cashew nut and tobacco has begun to bear fruits. The main concern of these farmers is the lack of improved seed. Even that seed, I want to challenge the expert. The seed fails us, and the seeds grow rapidly with these weather conditions. For example, these unreliable lanes, these seeds discourage our hope because 
it is the seed that we depend on. Instead, we are brought seeds that demoralize the farmer's heart. The seed does not produce. In the past, I was producing up to 1,500 kilograms per acre. But right now, even though you struggle, you end up with nothing. For cotton seed, we had seeds like three types. The first or the oldest seed type, I do not know how it was called. I do not remember well. Then we had UK 91 seeds brought in as experimental seeds, and we have UK MO08 seeds. So these are the three types of seeds we have, and the challenges including failure to grow. Even in this season, the problem manifested. They germinated well in some fields and fell in other farms. Now, I do not know whether the problem is from factory or the problem is that farmers are unable to follow instructions. Generally, the seed is a problem. Imagine buying seeds, planting them, and they fail to germinate. Or only a fraction of the seeds germinate. Imagine successfully planting seeds and waiting for harvest only to get a half or a third of what was expected. Devastating, right? The challenge of the risks and persistence of these insects is another factor in declining cotton production in the country. Although the government prohibited the cultivation cotton in the largest part of the country, with a good land for cotton cultivation, especially in the southern regions, as a means of preventing the distribution or spreading of reddish caterpillars, cotton producers in the cotton-growing regions are not safe. The world recognizes the major environmental and health effects of pesticides, but uh, pesticides have been a myth to cotton farmers. I planted cotton in 2012, but I ended up with poor harvest. The problem was pesticides. The drugs that they brought us were unusual, and they could not kill the insects that were constantly attacking. I had planted three acres, but the yield was very small. I got only Tanzanian shillings, 326,000 for all the three acres. Since that year, I stopped cotton cultivation. In the earlier days, we had high cotton production. From seven acres, one could get about three to 3.5 tons. These days, one can at most yield about one to 1.5 tons from the same seven acres. This reduced yield largely being as a result of insect infestations. We spray pesticides, but after two days, the insect is already returned. When we come to realize the production was so poor, we say, no, we just decided to stop cultivation cotton. These pesticides are not proper. They don't kill the pests. It reaches a point farmers conducted an experiment with the pest and put it in the insecticide and nothing happened to the pest. We went to spray the insecticides. We found caterpillars in insects and we sprayed them. When we turned in the evening, nothing had happened to caterpillars. I told them we, we would come to do some research on the drugs later, but in real sense, it was just satisfying them because looking at expired date, the medicine was new. It was, it was not expired. We mixed the insecticides and applied them as required, but the pests did not die. The first production we use now, when we were young people until this time, has changed. I remember in the past they were using the drugs such as theodan, karat, and other drugs. 
The production has come down after the introduction of modern drugs that often do not kill insects. The invasion of American fall armyworm is a new threat for cotton products. In cotton, these pesticides have had a profound effect. That is, they have completely destroyed. For example, for those who planted it at the beginning of the season could not harvest anything. Maybe some farmers who planted late in January can get some harvest because the insect is could decrease because of the rains. Earlier, the insects were known and could easily be handled. Of recent, the insects are quite unfamiliar and handling has become even harder. As we say, we want to have industrialized Tanzania. Manufacturing industry will be possible when we are sure of getting raw materials. And the government does not produce raw materials, citizens produce raw materials. So we have to invest in experts and policies to ensure in all circumstances the farmers does not have any loss. If farmers are well guided, will fulfill that goal. You'll see. We'll be full of those raw materials. Our farmers are hard workers and obedient. For only two years, the American fall armyworms have caused a loss to the nation. This is according to the Director General of the TCB. And this year, this challenge emerged in cotton production. Generally, in agriculture, there is an invasion of new army worm. This is a major problem for farmers. In fact, the government and all stakeholders must now plan a strategy on how to deal with this worm. The worm affects more than eight species of crops. And cotton farmers did, did not know that there was a new army worm which also attacked cotton. So they maintained their routine of spraying for long interval of 14 days. This interval gave pace to the pesticides to continue with their destruction on the farm and as a result farmers got lost. For farmers who spent some time saving the field, at least their harvest was somewhat better. The problem is that existing pesticides don't destroy the worm's eggs. So if you spray today and after three days the egg hatch, they continue with eating the crops. For a short term solution in the next season, the cotton board has decided to use traps for reducing butterflies, hence reduce their reproduction. Since if you trap the butterfly, you decrease the possibility of laying eggs. Let's ask ourselves, what miracle do those who supply us with new and even used clothes have? The current information on scientific publications and global financial institutions show that the world leading cotton producers are China, India, the United States, Pakistan and Brazil. All these countries have enabled their farmers to use BT cotton seeds. The seeds are improved by enabling germination and resistance to insects that are still challenging Tanzanian farmers. While farmers who use BT cotton seeds harvest between 1,500 and 2,500 kg per acre, Tanzanians harvest 400 to 800 kilograms per acre. Economic experts uphold that BT cotton farmers use a small amount of pesticides and then harvest four times more than Tanzanian cotton farmers who spend a lot of money on buying pesticides. It should be noted that cotton prices on the world market are similar to BT cotton and Tanzanian cotton. In that context, factories from cotton products in China, India, the United States, Pakistan and Brazil receive enough raw materials to produce throughout the year while their farmers get a reliable market and gain more profit than Tanzanian farmers. The biggest production in these industries reduces industrial costs, so making clothes produced for example in China cheaper than in Tanzania. 
Not surprisingly, therefore, Tanzanian farmers wear clothes used by Chinese or American farmers. This is due to the fact that the income of Tanzanian cotton farmers is declining. This is due to the fact that the income of Tanzanian cotton farmers is declining. So it is cheaper to buy second-hand or even new customs imported from abroad. When looking for the answer to President Dr. John Pombe Magufuli on where did we go wrong, Dr. Evelyn Lukonge, a leading cotton researcher in the country, explains the position of BT cotton seed for Tanzanian farmers. Una issue of BT cotton, kama soruhisho. BT cotton comes in as a recommended solution for the challenges brought about by pests in crops. Several countries have benefited from the use of BT cotton. BT cotton reduces the use of pesticide sprays, thus sparing the environment from pesticide effects. In effecting BT cotton as a solution, we can start with the very early stages, that is, incorporation of the substance that will destroy pests into seeds that have already been identified as suitable and with the desired characteristics. BT cotton has been successful in several countries and has a growing popularity. To be able to compete in the market locally and more so internationally, Tanzania has to employ the use of BT cotton. However, bearing in mind technological concerns which have been raised and those should be addressed. The TCB director also sees the opportunity of using BT cotton seeds in the direction of industrializing the country. General, genetically modified cotton technology and bacterium in cotton seedlings co counts to almost 8% of cotton cultivated around the world. So Tanzania is one of the countries that needed to have such a technology. In its broad sense, biotechnology's response to the issue of climate change. We have a number of plant pests and diseases, so I definitely call for studies of biotechnology to begin. Doing research does not mean we have begun to use the technology, but when you have a technology, you are a better positioned to address any problem that might arise. The main issue in which Tanzania should be aware of is Kenya is already doing this experiment, while Malawians have three years ahead. Sudan already have the technology. If an action is not taken, Kenya BT cotton will soon enter the country through Silali border to our region. As a result, we will be found unprepared. The man goes and picks up the seedlings from Migori and plants them here in Tanzania. That's why it is important to start preparing so that we should not be brought seeds that we have not prepared for. Cotton is an important item in the economy of Nzega district in Tabora region. The Nzega district commissioner, Mr. Godfrey Ngupula, wants researchers to be given a chance on this BT cotton issue. Personally, I consider an activist who has invested in talking only with no answers to the existing challenges as a dead activist. Since there is nothing that has only negative impact. In science we say, if you do not have the research, and that you don't have the right to speak, where do they get the right to talk if they do not have any answers? So if they are against, let them give the answers and we will listen to them and their responses. Otherwise, they should keep silent and see what scientists can do. I know why they disagree. It is true that science and technology have come negative impact, but we have to weigh out are the benefits greater than the losses, then we need to develop means to cope with the losses. Just complain about technologies without telling us how to deal with the losses. Where do you want us to go? Tanzania is not a village. We must move forward. At the same time, the Mara Regional Commissioner, Honorable Adam Malima, said that it is the right time for Tanzanian farmers to benefit from the development of new cotton production technologies, since many challenges have scientific responses.
Really, we've got to begin looking at uh, how huge potential areas of uh, cotton production in Tanzania, uh, in southern Tanzania, have been banned from farming cotton simply because of the Red, red uh, Army Ballworm. And, and this should not be a problem. Science has already tackled this problem and eliminated the problem as a problem at all. It's not a problem. The, the, it has already been resolved. But you can see we've had hundreds and hundreds of acres of potential cotton farming land being discarded for the fear of the red ball. Whether I think Tanzania is ready for BT technology, I think it is. After all, 70% of cotton worldwide is being produced by BT cotton. So not to have BT cotton is, is not fair. Is not fair on the Tanzanian farm. Not fair on the African farm. So he's being forced to compete by producing cotton that is much more expensive than those who are using BT cotton. So if Tanzania is producing 250,000 tons of cotton, technically, in co with consideration of the land and, and, and the farming population and everything else, Tanzania should be, should be farming three or four times as much. So what does that do? That makes Tanzania potentially one of the biggest producers of cotton in the whole of Africa. The minister responsible for agriculture, Dr. Charles Dizeba, also expects the BT cotton to contribute significantly to cotton production in the country. Currently, there is this issue of BT cotton. The world has now shifted from the UKM08 technology and when this technology, which increases cotton quality and production, I want to tell my colleagues, researchers, to start immediately. They should not stick on UKM08 when their peers have shifted by BT cotton with a lot of fields. Sudan is, is doing well. Burkina Faso is doing well. We are just looking ourselves with unnecessary procedures, which are sometimes just delaying us. In Tanzania, the final decision on the use of BT cotton seeds or any seeds with genetic improvement is made by farmers. What are the Tanzanian farmers thinking about BT cotton seeds? The farmers use insecticides so as to have better harvest. But if there are seeds that are resistant to insects and the farmers are satisfied with them, I don't find it difficult to move from this point to that point. There's no problem even if they won't be using pesticide as usual. What farmers wow, want is better yeah. yeah, I will take it. Isn't it fine? I'll take it very heartedly. That the seeds are pest resistant. I'll take even more because they will have the best quality. Mm. If these seeds are different from those we used to know, we farmers shall cut it. We have not dis despaired from cotton cultivation because it has helped us with all the pride you see here. So if there is a good seed and market, we are ready. We are ready. If we are well instructed and well guided because farming is our work, mainly if we get satisfied with the production given the insects are many in this end, I do not know whether that knowledge exists. We have no problems. If it is brought, we want modern seeds that will store farmer hope by getting us as much as possible. The implementation of the fifth phase government initiative led by President Dr. John Pombe Magufuli of industrializing Tanzania and becoming a middle economy country is for all of us. 
For cotton industry, policymakers, managers, cotton researchers and producers are ready. It will be remembered in 2013, the former president of Tanzania, Honorable Dr. Jakaya Kikwete, urged the start of BT cotton farming. If we are awarded on food, why not start with cotton? No one eats cotton and the harvest three times more than current harvest. Our fellows are doing, why not us? If you start, income will increase three times and will fight poverty as for the poor live in rural areas. It is because their activities do not provide enough income, but if they will generate more and more earnings, we will be successful. So those are the issues we are going to discuss about the... We will give you the conclusion soon, and we will see how we go, but you are doing a terrific job, and the challenges you face are known. We will continue addressing them. Today, all stakeholders agree we can use BT cotton to increase production and reduce the use of pesticides. Why are we not starting? Who is delaying us? Let us ask ourselves and get answers to get out of here. <laughs>